What's going on everybody? Lil Chris here and in today's video I'd like to continue my series on break and runs using my GoPro. And what I have for you today will be two racks of eight ball. And with the first rack you're going to have the normal field of view of the entire table and before each shot I will pop up the view of the GoPro so you can actually see where I'm hitting on the cue ball. But with the second rack you're only going to have the view from the GoPro. So you're actually going to get a small tour of my garage that I use as my pool room. And this time I will be commentating throughout the rack from beginning to end so you can hear my thought process and see what I do when things go according to plan and see what I do when things don't. So let's get started. So here's the first rack and I'm going to be breaking more from the middle of the table with a head on hit. So if you can remember, I'm expecting the balls in the second row to head towards their respected side pockets. And then the corner balls, I'm expecting them to be able to go four rails, provided that nothing gets in their way, and then head towards their respected corner pockets. Okay, I think every ball pretty much got kicked by something else, but I did see that the nine ball fell into this corner pocket here, so it looks like we're going to be stripes. So now with stripes, the first thing I want to establish is, do I see any troubled balls on the table? And it doesn't look like it. Every ball that I need for stripes is at least out in the open and is accessible. So the only issue that I do see though is the eight ball being cluttered up next to the six ball. It's not really that big of an issue because the eight ball does have a path to that side pocket, but it's a pretty tight squeeze next to the six ball. So more than likely I'll be looking at trying to break the eight ball away from the six ball, most likely using the 11 ball, maybe even the 12 ball. <clears throat> so now, the next thing I'm going to do is choose my opening shot. And with what I see here, because of the 15 ball being where it's at, I want to try to play it as soon as possible just to get it out of the way. And I can do that either with the 13 ball or the 12 ball. If I choose the 12 ball, then I want the cue ball to hit this side rail and come out and land somewhere right around here Do I have a thin cut on the 15 ball. If I use the 13 ball, I'm going to have the cue ball come off this short rail and come back out for pretty much the same angle. It's just which one do I think I have a higher chance at being successful at. Now, if I choose the 12 ball, I do run the risk of hitting it too hard and I lose the position entirely. But if I choose the 13 ball, as long as I hit this rail with enough power, it's going to come out and I'll have a shot no matter how far away I get. So this is the shot that I'm going to choose. And I got the position that I want. So now from here, I'm going to make the 15 into the corner pocket and I can pull the cue ball back out this way to where I can land on the 14 ball or the 12 ball if I land a little too far. Okay, I'm a little too far on the 14 ball, but I'm going to go ahead and take it anyway, because if I take the 12 ball, my cue ball comes up this way, and I have to control myself back down this way to take the 14 ball. So I think what I'm going to try to do here is cut the 14 ball into the side pocket, get the cue ball to come as close to this corner pocket as I can, and go two rails, maybe even a third rail, and reposition myself back onto the 12 ball. Okay, even got a little help from the three ball. Okay, 
Oh, and this is why it's important to study the entire table before you start making decisions. Because you heard me say earlier that the eight ball could possibly go here, but I'm so close to the six ball. Now that I'm over here, I can already see that the eight ball can go into this corner pocket. All I have to do is get the 11 ball out of the way. So now that helps me determine what the rest of my route is going to be. And what I'm going to try to do here is make the 12 into the side pocket and get position for the 11 ball. Now I can play the 11 in the corner and I'd like to get position for the 10 in the side. The problem is that the cue ball naturally wants to go this way. So do I want to try to fight the natural angle with inside spin or right spin to pull the cue ball back this way? Or do I want to work with it and allow the cue ball to come this way to get position on the 10 here? I'm actually going to go with right spin on this one. And the reason being is because when I cut the 10 ball into the side pocket, we should be able to see that my cue ball naturally wants to come down here and I just need to hit it with the right speed to come back up for position on the eight in the corner pocket. All right, eight ball, corner pocket. Okay, so there's one complete run through of an eight ball rack and how I try to break it down from beginning to end. Sometimes things don't always go according to plan, and that's why I usually have to come up with backup plans to be able to figure stuff out, especially the part when I discovered that the eight ball could go into this corner pocket. Now, let's set up another rack, and I'll give you a whole new field of view to watch a run out. Okay, so let's try this again, except I'm going to change the entire field of view so you'll only have the perspective of the GoPro. Okay, so this time I was able to get the 10 ball from the second row to fall into its respective side pocket. The two ball almost fell into its respective side pocket, but we're still going to be stripes again. So just like before, I want to be able to establish if there are any trouble spots on the table. And for stripes, it doesn't look like there is any. Every ball looks like it has a path to a pocket. The only issue that I will see is the eight ball, because with the four and the five, I'm not able to make it into either of these corner pockets. I'm more than likely going to have to play it into either of these corner pockets, but let's see how the rack develops. So it looks like my first shot is going to have to be with the 11 ball. And with my 12 ball being down here, I need to get down there as soon as possible. So that way I can just come back up here and finish this section of the table off. So I'm going to play the 11 ball into the side pocket. I should have automatic position for the 9 ball. I can also shoot the 14 ball and still be able to get position on the 12. But I think I'm going to use the 9 ball to get down here. Okay, now with the position that I have on the 12 ball, I'm going to go ahead and try to draw the cue back, come off the side rail, and then get position on the 14 ball. I 
Almost got a little unlucky and got blocked by the one ball. Now let's try to make the 14 ball into the corner pocket. And you should be able to see with the top spin that I have on the cue ball, I'm wanting the cue ball to run into the five ball. And I was even fortunate enough to move the eight out into the open. So now what I can do here is play the 15 ball. I'm actually going to cheat the pocket a little bit so that way I can stun the cue ball to my right and have position for the 13 ball in the opposite corner pocket. Now from here, I can draw back and I'm going to put a touch of right spin so when the cue ball comes back and hits this side rail, it'll actually spin to my left and get position on the eight ball. Eight ball, corner pocket. And that's going to do it for today's video. Now I hope with the commentary that I did this time, you now have a better understanding of how I tried to break down a rack from beginning to end. Since you saw that each rack started off with a selected set, the first thing I try to do is establish if there are any trouble spots on the table and deal with them as soon as possible if I can. The next thing you saw is if there was a ball that was isolated at one end of the table, I try to get to that ball as soon as I possibly can so that I can return back to the other half of the table and keep my cue ball movement small, which is going to be a lot easier to control. And then, like always, you saw that my cue ball control just wasn't 100% accurate, but that's going to be normal for a player like myself. Now, what I'm really interested in knowing is what you all think of just having the view of the GoPro. From what I already saw, when I'm standing around planning, I need to tilt my head down a little bit lower so that way you all can see the entire view of the table while I'm building my plan. But let me know what you all think about in the comment section below. And as always, if you like what you saw, then give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Take care, everybody.